welcome to Discovering. Tonight we're fishing with Finn Patel. Every tournament team needs a name, and I think this one is fitting. And we're trying to find a good name for an all-female boat. Yeah. Like the Femme Fatales. But we're killers. We're killers. <laughs> we lure the fish in. Yes. We lure, lure the fish in. And we may or may not kill them. Because we, yeah. 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 So we, we lure we're them. We're fatal yeah. to the fins. Yeah. Of the fish, not the not fish. finish people. Not at <laughs> And after the Keweenaw Bay Classic Fishing Tournament, we have time for another boat tour of the Portage Canal. This time with Keweenaw Boat Tours. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields Call of the timber wolf The loon's lonesome trill The eagle soaring high above The trout lies deep and still These are what I treasure The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. The annual Keweenaw Bay Classic Fishing Tournament in Lons is one of the biggest fishing tournaments in the UP bringing in teams from all over. This year was record setting with- 141. That yeah. was- A record. A record, it was unbelievable. It was chaotic in certain <laughs> points because that's a lot of boats to have in a smaller bay and smaller area, but people from all over. We had folks from Detroit, yep. Minnesota came. Wisconsin. Um, Wisconsin, all over the Upper Peninsula. So yeah. it was phenomenal turnout. One team in particular I was excited to jump on board with was Finn Patel the only all-female boat in the tournament. It's definitely been like, for the past, I don't know how many years, it's just been a very well-run tournament. Yeah. And it's so well-run that it's becoming like one of the biggest tournaments, I feel like even downstate and upstate. On this ladies' team is Jane Somerset, her sister Kathy, and friends Cassie and Linda, <laughs> all avid anglers. You've seen Jane a couple times before on the show, as I've been out fishing with her and her husband, Travis White. The first rule of this tournament to know is no lines in the water until 5 a.m., which is early enough for me. It was raining when we boarded the boat, but by the time we started putting lines out, the air and water were calm and it turned out to be a beautiful morning. We fished somewhere within the boundaries of the tournament. I can't say for sure where we were at. Rules state you can fish Keweenaw Bay all the way to Big Bay Lighthouse, so a pretty good stretch of water. The tournament line limit per boat is 12. It looks like they've done this before. So each year we had like a different approach because the first year we had some motor troubles, but first two years I think we just jigged. Last year was our first year on a different boat where we decided to troll to try and increase our numbers. We had manual downriggers. And so that kept us busy enough with 18 fish that we didn't even get lead core out. So this year with the uh, the electric downriggers. Now we were able to fish with six lead core lines and two downriggers. Maybe uh, next year we'll throw in two dipsies on each side too. <laughs> we'll <Right>. see. <laughs> we'll see. They also made sure to get out on the water a few times before the tournament. I joined the team earlier in the spring for girls weekend to dust off our open water fishing and filming skills. You wouldn't get into any other sporting tournament without practicing first. Plus, after a long UP winter of ice fishing, the open water skills get kind of rusty. But it's a good activity to do for a girls weekend. So we've been fishing for quite a few years together, but we mainly just fish with downriggers or we cast or then we jig for lake trout. And now we're trying lead core, electric downriggers, 
and just getting a bigger spread out, kind of testing the waters and doing a practice run. So in nice weather as well, nor northeast wind, which always presents an extra little challenge. You know it's a good morning of fishing when the fish bite before your first sip of coffee. Hot boiling water out of the way! Oh, that was so good. Yay. After the first fish hit the floor, it was game on. Oh, oh middle board, middle board, middle oh, board, middle board. Get it. Go, go, Cass, go! You got an extra eye. Yes! <laughs> During the weigh-in, the tournament MC asked me if they lost any fish. I might have lied. We did lose a couple right away, which they weren't going to let happen that, again. Oh, nope, there's one on here oh, too. Man. Yeah, that might be. <laughs> I don't think he's on there anymore. Yeah. Well, I was right, it was a pretty small feeling. I think around there a bit, Cass, I got Yes, yes, I brought the fish. Yeah, she did that yesterday for us, too. Hook sharpened and ready to reel in that big one. Now we don't have any excuse to not reel them in. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, oh, oh. That was real good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Bigger than the last one. Woohoo! Yay! Wow! Woo! Yeah, it feels like that. Push the button. Every time we talked about going somewhere else on the lake, the fish started biting. Kathy was doing an excellent job of steering us into the fish. They like Kathy's curves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Linda. Get it. Is it? Yeah. Wait, how deep are we, Kath? 117. Okay. Good, so that when I set this next one. Woo! Yeah, get yeah. a little bigger! Kaz, I'm gonna let you reel this one in too, because every single time you reel one in, there's a fish, so. It feels weird. Should I get a net? I wonder if it feels weird. Oh, oh the fish on there! It must be hooked yeah, Cass, you're really on all the lines on that side. <laughs> my lucky day. Excellent. Oh, that's a laker. It is a laker. Oh, yay! Yeah. Oh, we have a fly on the purple one. The two main divisions of this tournament are lake trout and salmon. Each team can weigh in five fish in each category. The most weight wins. There are also prizes for heaviest single fish in each division and a host of other prizes. Most people do one category just because it's hard to focus on getting big fish in both, but I like to spread out our chances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have two salmon right now. Okay. Just two more salmon than we had in past years. Yeah, so yeah. if we have five like decent lake trout and two salmon, it's pretty good. Yeah, and we, this is like our fourth year, I think, mm -hmm. doing it. Yeah. Which is pretty fish off, fish off. <laughs> I heard it click. <laughs> oh boy. I don't feel like he's fighting anymore. I think he might be swimming towards me. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Yeah, 
That is a good size. Three salmon in the boat now. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think it's a fish. Good eye, Linda. Yeah. The morning flew by. The fishing was fast and furious. The chaos was exciting, and we rarely had a lull in fish. Yeah, upgrade! We didn't land them all, but we didn't miss many either. This is Linda's special lure. This is what we caught most fish on last year. Yep. <laughs> okay. This one once again feels big, but we'll see. Upgrade. Um, I think that there's a fish on the farthest one, maybe. It might be a little bit fast. Yeah. yeah. Got him. Bye bye, buddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, I think there's a fish on there. Okay. That's why. Yep. I think it, it popped. So you take that up. Okay. You're doing no. You're doing great. Double. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get your planer board. Thank you, Cap. You did it again with your magic speed. There we go. There we are. Oh, I think we need the net first. It's a baby. <laughs> it's a boy. It is the smallest lake trout. Yeah, that the one can go back. Fish on, fish on the downrigger. Downrigger, Kathy, what's the depth? Or it's the bottom. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo! You got a fish, you got a fish on the rigger. Got it? <laughs> Why don't you come here and reel in this fish? <laughs> a laker! Yay! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> it's another salmon. Yeah. Yeah. Four salmon. Yeah, four salmon. It's a wee baby. <laughs> the ladies reeled in a pile of fish, but nothing of too much size. We had plenty to pick from to bring five to the weigh in, and those that looked healthy enough went overboard. For the tourney, we had to be off the water by 3 p.m., but by late morning, Superior got rough as predicted, showing her true colors, and after 20 fish, four mugs of coffee, and one dance party, we called it a day. Shall we call it? Let's reel yeah, our lines. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go All right. Okay. Yeah. Woo, we're, we're calling it. <laughs> it almost had us fooled today, though, because it was so beautiful earlier that thought maybe the forecast had changed, but... Nope. <laughs> yeah. 1045 and 11 o'clock, it's supposed to be not too good. So, yeah, they'd be closer to the to end. Yeah, and you can even see the wind picking up now. The tournament weigh-in was held at the Launce Downtown Waterfront Park. I met one of the original founders of the tournament in the crowd. And for the past few years, it has been put on by the Berga County Next Gen team. So 2021, we started it. We kind of ran our own thing last minute. Um, it had been going on for about 15 years. So it was getting to the point where they wanted to turn it over and we were able to kind of take it and make it as good as we possibly could on our own. So it's been pretty awesome. The tournament paid out 100% of the entry money down to 15th place in the lake trout and salmon divisions, plus other cash prizes. 
anglers walked away with some awesome door prizes too, and so did the kids. Uh, our, our community is incredible as yeah. far as donations. I mean, the entire community flocks in. They want to donate money to this. They want to have this be the best event of the entire summer for our community. And I would argue that it probably is. Ben Fatale finished with 13.99 pounds of lake trout and 5.66 pounds of salmon. The winning lake trout team was Bird Dog with a total of 38.6 pounds of lakers. The first place team in the salmon division, SB 2.0, had a total of 22.48 pounds of salmon. Each of those walked away with the largest lake trout and largest salmon. Seems like you just need that one big fish. But overall, we had multiple 20 plus pound lake trout brought in. Multiple um, 10 plus pound kings sat. brought in. And it's been a tough king bite. The cohos have been on fire all year. And of course today, even the coho fishing was tough. <laughs> um, but overall, it was a really, really good day. Um, fishing was a little bit tough because of the weather, but right. everyone had a blast. I, I, I mean, everyone we talked to, everyone we were talking to as they were coming up had a blast. Even the people on the 16 foot boat that were rocking and rolling. 10 miles north of Pacwami in the middle <laughs> of the lake when the wind switched. So yeah, it was great. And thanks to Finn Fatale for inviting me on your boat. You gals killed it on the water. Anytime someone asks me if I want to go for a boat ride, I can't say no. There's another boat tour that docks in the Portage Canal that you can take this summer. I'm Jason Swain. Uh, moved up here to the Keweenaw area about six years ago. I was in the Coast Guard for 20 years. Uh, grew up in Lower Michigan. Uh, joined the Coast Guard about, like I said, 23 years ago now and made that a career. Driving boats, driving ships, seeing the country, stationed all over the place. I'm stationed here back in 2017, chose this as a, my final destination. Um, I knew I could retire. Following my retirement, uh, I needed something to do. I love the water, love being on boats. Uh, last year was my first season doing the tours, and it was so popular I had to keep doing it. Everybody that's gotten off my boat has loved it. I've had repeat customers come back and do different tours, and uh, ones that already this year that plan on coming back and doing something different. Everyone seems to really love it, and I'm lo I love doing it. I don't know what else I would do. It's just fun. So here we're sitting in front of the Portage River Lighthouse, otherwise known as the Jacobsville Lighthouse. And so what this lighthouse is actually marking is not so much the Portage River, but the Jacobsville quarries here. So you see a little bit of the red cliffs that it's sitting on uh, behind me. Uh, this whole area was full of this red and white kind of sandstone. It's used to build much of the copper country. And behind me over here, there was a dock that came out on this point. The uh, ships would pull up to and pick up huge pieces of this sandstone from these quarries. They were like four foot by four foot by eight foot chunks of this sandstone. So this lighthouse was actually marking where the uh, ships would come in and pick this up. We kind of take for granted of the beauty of this area, but uh, a lot of folks coming up from downstate, uh, from the, you know, the Chicago area, from the Minneapolis. I get people, I had people from France on board last year, from overseas. They're fascinated just being able to get out of town and see stuff that you can't see on, uh, on, on car, right? Um, there's a lot of cool places to see. There's a lot of cool mining history here that you can see. But to get on a boat like this, where you could actually get out of town and see some of these geological features like the cliffs, the lighthouse out there, they're just in awe of, of things that you can just get out of town and see. Not many people get to see this stuff. Here's kind of a prominent section of the Jacobsville sandstone and the cliffs uh, behind me here. Between two to three billion years ago, the Huron Mountain Range across the way there, across Keweenaw Bay, was about the same size as the Rocky Mountains. So yes, those out west, that is a mountain range. It's just older than the Rockies. And what you see behind me are some of the remnants and some of the particles from those mountains as they've eroded over the eons, right? You have sedimentary rocks, right? That's little particles that are crushed up and ground over time um, that have been compacted by uh, different events like uh, water levels, glacial periods, or two glaciers two miles high weigh a lot, right? 
So they press down on the earth and uh, the rocks and kind of crumble up and they kind of compact together. So a lot of folks don't realize where we sit here, kind of the, the different uh, geological formations that occurred over time. The Keweenaw itself is home to one of the largest lava flows on the planet. So all that combination with all the world you know, events happening over the centuries combined to make really pretty pictures like this. You have a few different trips that, that you can choose from. Uh, what we did today was the Jacobsville Lighthouse and Sandstone Cliffs uh, out of the south entry. Another option I do is the uh, Sunset Cruise out the north entry. So that goes out the other end of the peninsula where the sun sets over Lake Superior. There's some pretty waterfalls, some pretty cliffs on that side as well and also some history to talk about along the way. New for this year, I added a, what I call a Keweenaw Adventure Tour. To learn more or book your own tour, go to KeweenawBoatTours.com. That's all for tonight, and I hope to see you right back here next week for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.